Welcome back, MIS 343 students. We're talking about Chapter 2, Analyzing the Business Case. When we're talking about strategic planning, we're really focusing on our long-term goals, strategies, and resources for our organization. And that really starts with the mission statement. A mission statement is that high-level overview of what does our company stand for? What do we do? What is our focus? Uh, let's look at Google's mission statement real quick. And you can Google, you can Google not only Google's mission statement, but any mission statement. Uh, Google's is to organize the world's information, make it universally accessible and useful. That kind of sums up exactly what it is. We want to have anybody, no matter where you are, in the world no matter what your standing is to be able to have access to the world's information but have it in a organized and incredibly accessible way so you can see mission statements are important they drive the company in the direction they're going You've probably heard of SWOT analysis, strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. I'm sure this is the, uh, the first time you're seeing it, and it won't be the last time. A SWOT analysis is a really great way to analyze a product, a service, uh, could even be an organization, and break down four categories. When I was working on a business plan, the company never got off the ground, but we had SWOT analysis. We had two or three different ones really breaking down, you know, hey, these are what are good at. These are what we're bad at. Here are outside external factors that affect us that are both opportunities and threats. So having a good understanding of making a SWOT analysis is critical and that's a skill you're going to use because the more in-depth your SWOT analysis is the better data we can extract from that to make critical decisions so up to this point it really sounds like any sort of business class right you know we're talking about mission statements we're talking about where the company is going so where does the IT plan in this IT has the big important role in this right a lot of times when we at least in my experience in the companies i've worked at when we're trying to get a new project off the ground that initial kickoff meeting we have it there uh, for multiple reasons right um, they can help us determine what resources we need for this project they can help us understand what tools we have at our disposal um, you know for example do we have Visio license? Do we have a license for maybe Adobe Pro or other uh, software that we need? And making sure that the long term goal is attainable and realistic. Let's say we wanted to do a new database for our customers, but our inputs and outputs are just too vast for something we have the resources to carry out. Uh, you know, maybe, we, maybe we're a small company. Maybe we really don't have anything bigger than Microsoft Access right now. So IT can really come down and say, hey, you know, this database is possible, but it's not going to look the way you have it. And we want to make sure that the way we're going with this, we have uh, proper tools at our disposal. So again, we can make the correct decisions going down the road. So at this kickoff meeting, we're going to have some sort of proposal. This is the system we want. These are the resources we need to put for it. And this is our output. This needs to be very easy to understand. I can't stress this enough. You want to make sure that in your proposal and in whether it's a formal proposal, whether it's a white paper or a presentation, that it has to be written in a language that anyone can understand. If it is a database, you don't want it really necessarily to be written by a database expert. We don't want to use shop talk or technical lingo in this. It needs to be very plain English, and something that anybody can understand no matter what their position is in the company. But we also really need to look at that last part, estimate financial impact. A lot of times the financial cost is really your go no go for certain projects. So you want to look more at hey not only at the end hey this is how much it's going to cost us but what is the benefit? What's your ROI? What am I going to get out of it? Yeah, I might have to shell out a hundred thousand dollars now, but am I going to see a savings of you know 10, 20, 30 grand a year moving forward? 
some sample questions down here. You know, why are we doing this project? That that's something I find myself asking a lot. Why are we undergoing this? Is this really benefiting us? Talk about finances. How much will it cost, and how long will it take? Because it could be a very large, expensive project, but if it's spread out over multiple fiscal years, it might be manageable as far as uh, financing and accounting are concerned. What kind of risks are involved, internal and external risk? You might want to do a risk and opportunity analysis. Think of that as a matrix where you rate things as, you know, high risk, low probability, or, you know, probability, low probability, high risk. So making sure that every action we have is fully understood and how do we measure success? A lot of people look at this in kind of a, a parochial way where, well, the project's successful when it's done. Well, not necessarily, right? A project can fail and still be successful. You know, that's where we want to have certain milestones, achievable milestones, but milestones that allow us to learn from our mistakes and move forward. And, and it could even be done in certain phases. You might have this big grandiose uh, system that you want to put out there, but it can be done in small implements where maybe you don't accomplish all five, you know, five breakdowns where you get four out of the five. Well, that's still an operating system. And finally, and I would actually move this up to why we're doing this project, but are there other alternatives to this? Are there other programs out there that accomplish what we need? Maybe we don't need to bill it. That's, that's important, right? And that can be something you can use to justify doing this project. There might be software out there that exists that does 90% of what we need. But we're going to build it in-house to do 100% of what we need. Or flip it around. Hey, you know, you get a project proposal that wants to do 10 different things, but there's a software out there that does 8 out of the 10. Well, that might be good enough. So again, there's no right or wrong answer when you're answering or writing a proposal for a business case, but we need to look at every little every little unit by itself and make sure we get the best answers to our decision makers. This is a really good breakdown of internal and external factors. Obviously, these are not all of them, but these are some pretty common ones we'll find. The best way to think about it are internal factors are things that we can control or influence in our organization, right? We know our strategic plan. We know our managers. We know what our stakeholders want. Those are the user requests. Uh, our IT department obviously will dictate some of the software and hardware requirements we have. And of course, our finances. These are things that we can at least control, influence, or understand better. Things that we really can't control are the external things. We can't control government regulations on it. Maybe there are certain laws that dictate things we can and can't do. We can't influence uh, or control our competitors or customers. That's just how the market is. We can't do anything about that. We also really can't do much about the economy. We might be trying to sell certain products, but if it's priced too high and the economy's not doing well, we're probably not going to sell that much of it. Maybe the technology just isn't there to develop what we want. Maybe suppliers aren't there to give us. You know, um, think of late uh, late 2020, early 2021, we had a very large chip crisis. So we had a hard time getting the internal components and that really hit automotive manufacturers. They want to build more cars, but we don't have the chips to control those cars. That's a supplier issue. Not a whole lot we can do about that, but wait it out. But if we do have supply chain issues, that's where we can go back to our internal factors, maybe adjust the scope of the project or go down a different route to help balance some less than ideal external factors. Any project you undertake will be dynamic, all right? You have to roll with the ebb and flow of that project, especially if you're using an agile methodology. You need to be agile to use agile. Projects rarely meet all their milestones and everything works smoothly. So as you have dynamic priorities, changes that can cause uh, requested priorities to change, you need to be able to roll with that. You need to be able to adjust to that. And you need to be able to understand things that affect the priority of the project. 
Uh, again, if this project really doesn't reduce overall costs, if it doesn't serve the customer better, if it doesn't serve your organization better, we're not going to devote a lot of time or money or people to it, uh, especially if we don't have the time, money, or people. You know, not every not every great idea can be executed in an organization, and that for some people is a hard pill to swallow because we can't always get what we want. We can't always do the projects we want, even if we think there's going to be a net positive outcome for it. Uh, the company, the organization, might just not have the resources to go down that route, and that is a very difficult skill to master, being able to understand that you could have a, a really good idea, a really well thought out project, but it never gets the green light. All right, so that's going to end our chapter two PowerPoint. Keep pushing forward. Again, if you have any questions, please let me know.